I can recall quite vividly uh, when uh, the nine of us met for the first time. We were told to go down to uh, sign in under the name of Max Peck. And it turned out that all nine of us signed in under the name of Max Peck. Then there was this young fellow that uh, I said, uh, you know, uh, we introduced each other, and he was a fellow by the name of Neil Armstrong. And I said, well, are, were you in the, are you in the Navy or the Air Force? He says, no, I, I work for NASA. And I thought, uh-oh, boy, we got a ringer here. It's going to be a tough battle to get a flight on <laughs> with Neil aboard. But he turned out to be a team player, a real great guy. And uh, as we know from you know the history of what went on after that. After people had looked up for tens of thousands of years and wondered what was up there, Neil was the first person to ever make a footprint on some place other than Earth. I told Neil once that uh, I'm not a very jealous person, but for him I'll make an exception on that one. <laughs> that first step on the moon was really something. He always had car troubles. And uh, he drove out one time in one of his cars and it quit working out at, out at uh, work. And so we got borrowed a tow rope from the maintenance people and I hooked it up to my station wagon and up to his car and I towed him into Lancaster at about 70 miles an hour. <laughs> so I could see him shaking his fist at me in the window. Apollo 10, we went to the moon too. I, I like to tell Neil, and always did remind him that uh, Apollo 10, we painted the white line in the sky so we wouldn't get lost, so all he'd have to do is wor worry about that little thing about landing. I got to see him at the Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony back in November. We got him to a restaurant, and he spent time with General Staff Gene Cern and the Collins, and they got to laugh and joke. I mean, I was sitting out in the car waiting for him so I could get him back to the hotel, and I had to finally go in there because I saw the, the restaurant closing down, and they were all in there just laughing, and, good, and I had to go in there, put my hands on my hips, and say, okay, fellas, it's time to go, you know. And Neil came out, and he said, are we going to dance out here in the street? And I said, no, we're not going to dance in the street. Twana got to go to bed. <laughs> You, know, you always came away from a conversation with Neil uh, thinking that uh, he wants you to be the important person, not himself, in this, in this encounter. And so, yeah, it was a delight to talk to. Everybody liked Neil. He was quiet. He was a man of many talents. He was also a good friend.
I'll always think of Neil though as a, as a friend and uh, it's uh, just too bad he's gone but uh, he looked at himself as being a, a uh, as being sort of out on the tip of the spear if you will and there were just a lot of thousands of people uh, that were designers and engineers and and uh, people who made made it possible for him to be out there doing what what he did and no one can take away anything from that but uh, he saw himself as uh, the results of a, the work of a great team of people. Neil was sincere. He always, always felt and said that, you know, it's not about me. It's about those other 500,000 people who made it possible for me to do what we did, what, what he did. You know, he always considered himself the tip of the arrow and the strength of the bow was the, 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 the the, and the American people who made it possible for him to do what he did. Uh, I often use Neil as a guide when uh, things are getting a little bit crazy and I think, okay, we gotta stick to the science, we gotta stick to the engineering, that's the most important, uh, and try and avoid the hype. And Neil was very good at avoiding the hype. You know, he was very much the straight shooter, you know, let's get the job done. And he carried that into his professional life and uh, as far as you know, we could see from the outside his personal life. It never uh, was about him. He, you know, I don't think I was even in his vocabulary. He, it was about the, uh, the team, the mission, the, uh, the job that, that had to be done and uh, don't focus the attention on me, focus it on, uh, on the product and the end, and the end uh, accomplishments that you want to get out of uh, this activity. And it's sort of the old, as long as everybody pulls on a rope in the same direction, you know, you can move mountains. So he was that kind of guy. Look at the Apollo 11 mission patch. Um, uh, he was commander of that mission, and as, as it went back then, the astronauts designed their mission emblem, and, uh, and there was one for every mission. Uh, that particular mission patch, look at it closely, there's no astronaut names on it. Why is there no astronaut names on it? Well, the word at the time was because the commander of the mission, who has 51% of the vote of what goes on the patch, didn't want the astronauts to get credit for our country being the first to land on the moon. He wanted our nation to get credit for it. So, no names on the patch. There's the eagle there, of course, representing the strength of our country, but the eagle is not carrying arrows in a form of arrogance or military. It's carrying an olive branch for peace. And, and to me, that, that kind of represents the personality of, of Neil. In life, it, it, it seems like um, when we lose something, God has a way of replacing it with something. And, and while there is no comparison whatsoever between Curiosity and Neil Armstrong, it is a second wave of, of explorers beyond low Earth orbit. And so it, it did worry me that, um, you know, here's this, this new explorer and I sure hope, I hope it's not replacing, you know, the icon. So he just wanted to know that other kids could, could be inspired not just only by his accomplishments, but by the accomplishments of a country. The impossible is possible. All you gotta do is go out and do it. I'm Neil Armstrong. I, I was the first human being on another, quote, planet in this universe. If I can do it, why can't you do it? Now, how's an 18 year old, a 16 year old, a 25 year old gonna argue with Neil Armstrong? He wanted to inspire these young people to dream, and his desire was to inspire these dreamers to dream on, to take us back again where no man has been before. I think if, if Neil would certainly find peace within himself to know, and I think he did, to know that he had indeed inspired this generation. I could see it in their eyes, I could see it in their hearts by standing in front of these kids and saying hi, I'm Neil Armstrong. Bingo. There's nothing they can't do. Well, Neil Armstrong and uh, the early astronauts were really the pioneers of exploration that for the first time all of us could 
see it as it was happening. Uh, when I think of something like Lewis and Clark, you, you took weeks to hear about what happened with exploration. But for this generation of explorers, we could experience it and we could see ourselves doing things that no one had ever done before. And I was eight years old watching Neil and Buzz walk on that, the moon the first time and it did uh, seem to me at that point that I could do anything. And I'm not sure if they hadn't done it, I would have grown up thinking that. I hope in some way that who he really was can be captured for people uh, so that future generations could profit from him. Because if we had a role model, Neil was one of our best role models. Whether it was going into space or being an engineer or being a successful businessman or anything like that, that his uh, approach of being quiet, not assuming, but accomplishing things, I think that is uh, something of his legacy that uh, young people uh, would appreciate. We all lost a piece of ourselves today, all of us who consider ourselves explorers. I've often wondered if during these passing years, when Neil looked up at the beautiful moon, he thought, mm-hmm, been there, done that. And I believe God sent Neil here to do what he needed to do. And once his assignment was up, then God called him back home. And so I'm really thankful and glad for that. <laughs>